Uh, lately, I've been doing a few videos on subnetting and things like that, and I felt like I should just continue in that same binary vein of a line of thinking with supernetting, the opposite of subnetting, okay? And so subnetting seeks to find which uh, hosts to the right of the subnet mask would, would be common to a subnet. Supernetting would be thinking about it going to the left, okay, to find the commonality such that you could create one supernet route, otherwise known as an aggregate route, otherwise known as a summary route. So supernet, aggregate, summary, sometimes considered synonymous terms. But what we're talking about here is when you do route aggregation for uh, making your routing advertisements smaller. If you were advertising four slash 24s out to the internet or within your IGP, within your interior gateway protocol, within your uh, routing domain, and you wanted to summarize routes at a boundary of some sort, whether it's a connection out to the internet or a OSPF area rolling up through an um, area border router or something like that, you're gonna to wanna to know how to sum summarize routes and the extent to which it affects uh, your other routes. So let's take these four, for example, all right? So we're taking these four slash 24 routes as an example, I've drawn a box around the octet where we're going to try to solve this um, problem of how to, summarize, how to summarize these four routes into one route. So the octet in question would be this third octet here. Now, before I go any further, let me just say that if you said, well, why don't, I mean, obviously you could send out a route of 192.0.0.0 slash 8, and wouldn't that include all those as a summary? Well, yeah, it would, but it would include a heck of a lot more. And what you're doing when you send out a summary route, what you do when you send out any route advertisement, is it's, it's a promise to the receiving router that you can deliver packets to that subnet or to that supernet. So, um, if, if you create a summary of 192.0.0.0 slash 8, you better be ready to, to, to deliver those packets from that router that sent that summary because it will attract traffic. And that's a heck of a lot of traffic that you may or may not want to uh, attract. So you want to be absolute and as specific as possible in your summaries. Um, and so let's blow up this third octet. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. You remember this scale. If you can remember the number 1, you can remember this scale. 1 doubled is 2, doubled is 4, doubled is 8, doubled is 16, doubled is 32, doubled is 64, doubled is 128. Okay? Draw your lines. It's your worksheet. Okay? This is the dot from here. This dot is right there. So this is bit 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and there's your dot where the 24th bit is. Okay, and so when you say bit 22 or bit 23, you're always talking about right after said bit. So this bit is actually the 20th bit, so you draw the line right after that bit. Okay, so what we're, do, what we're trying to do in determining the most efficient route that would represent these four slash 24s is you find the, the longest bit string that is common to all. So we're back to our uh, decimal to binary challenge. 100 greater than or equal to 128, no, draw a zero. 100 greater than or equal to 64, yes, draw the 100, put 64, subtract, it's 36. I hope you can see that. Uh, you're supposed to put a 1 there when the answer is yes. 36, greater than or equal to 32. Yes. Put the 32. We have 4, subtract, we have 4 left. Let's just cut to the chase and put a 4 there. Everything else is zeros. Or excuse me, you put a 1 in the 4's place. You know you're good. Okay, you know you're done. Next. Hey, look, 101. It's going to be the same bit string plus 1. 
right? 96 plus 4 is 100 plus 1, put 1 there, done. 102, it's going to be the same as 100 plus 2. So 96, 64 plus 32 is 96, plus 4 is 100, put a 1 in the 2's place is 102. Then you put a 0 there, that's 102. 103, it's going to be 100 plus 3. So 96, that's 64 plus 32 is 96, plus 4 is 100, plus 2 is 102, plus 1 is 103. So we're looking for the common, the, the longest bit pattern common to all of these. And that brings us, just do a stare and compare. You're looking at right here, bit 22. So that would be a slash 22. What are those bit strings? They're identical. Now, the two remaining bit columns, if you have exhausted all of the combinations, then this slash 22 summary route represents those and only those. What I mean by that? Uh, and so similar to a net ID in subnetting, when the host bits are set to zero, you're going to look at a supernet in a similar way that the net, the supernet ID will have host bits set to zero. So anything to the, to the right of where you've determined your boundary is for the supernet, call those host bits, uh, call these your supernet bits, supernet bits. And so convert that, that string back to decimal, and then you have your supernet route. So 64, everywhere there's a one, plus 32, plus four. That's 96 plus four is 100. So convert that back, that's 100, put that back up here. And we already know it's on a slash 22 boundary. That's where we determine the bit patterns are the same inside here. Those bit patterns are the same for all four of those. So the supernet route or the aggregate route is 192.168.100.0 slash 22. That route absolutely represents these and only these. And the reason is, is because the remaining bits in that third octet are exhausted. You've used them all. All right, now, if we try to add another subnet into that equation, then you would have to find common bits further this way, which would probably include a lot more than you really wanted to represent in your supernet. So stuff that you need to consider when crafting or when uh, generating an aggregate route. And this is how you would do it. All right. Thank you.